Okay, hi there. Welcome to another in our series of key diagram videos. Uh, this is the first of two videos looking at producer subsidies. In the first, we'll use the workhorse supply and demand model, and in the second, we'll go up a level to use cost and revenue curve analysis. And hopefully this will be useful. So a subsidy is a form of government intervention in the market, in the price mechanism, of course, designed to change market prices, change incentives, send signals to producers and consumers, and therefore alter the allocation of scarce resources. Essentially, a subsidy means the government pays part or bears part of the cost of supply. A good example might be that the government might decide to subsidise some of the manufacturing costs of businesses producing battery powered and also those hybrid plug-in electric vehicles. Uh, imagine the aim here. The aim is to stimulate production and revenues and profits and investment in this sector. Very interesting in terms of the European picture. So customers in Europe, not the European Union, but the continent, purchased somewhere between well, just 1.4, 1.5 million plug-in electric vehicles in 2020. Of course, that was the year of the pandemic. That was more than double the number in 2019, and it's a huge increase in percentage terms. Germany leads the way, of course, in terms of its registration of plug-in electric vehicles, both battery electric and hybrid. Uh, UK comes second, just with 300,000 head of funds. So let's work through the subsidy diagram. There's the market equilibrium pre-subsidy. The price is P1 and the quantity is Q1. If we subsidise the producers, that lowers their costs, leading to an outward shift in the supply curve. So there's the supply curve S2, or post-subsidy. It's quite nice in the exam to say pre-subsidy, post-subsidy, to make it really clear to the examiner what's happening. That fall in costs, that fall in the outward shift in supply, allows the market price to fall. Oh, by the way, that, that subsidy per unit is going to be key. It's the vertical distance between the two supply curves. And the subsidy, as a result of that, causes the equilibrium to change. There's our new equilibrium with a higher output, Q2, and a lower price, P2. So there's the basics of a subsidy. It shifts the supply curve out, lowering the manufacturing costs, causing market prices to fall, and there's an expansion along the demand curve. Now, the subsidy shifts the supply curve of electric cars to the right. Ketteris Paribus, other things being the same, this leads to a lower price and an expansion of quantity demanded. Uh, from Q1 to Q2. And lower prices, of course, increases the real incomes of consumers. It helps to make electric cars more affordable. There's the subsidy per unit again. We just need to show the government spending on the subsidy. So if the price the consumer pays is P2, the producer will get P2 plus the subsidy. Of course, the guaranteed the subsidy. So the, whatever the price is, P2, they're willing to lower the price because they know they're going to get a subsidy on top. So let's draw across to P3. P3 is the price paid, uh, the price received by producers. Uh, P1 is the price paid by consumers. The green area there is going to be the total spending by the government, equal to the subsidy per unit multiplied by the output. So the producer gets P3. The consumer pays P2. The gap is the subsidy per unit. The green area is total government spending. It's really quite important to show that in an analysis diagram in the exam. Very, very important to do that because this is going to be a key part of your evaluation. So the state spending or the public spending will be the output, Q2, multiplied by the subsidy per unit. And of course, subsidies can be expensive and may have to be financed either by the government buying money through the issue of debt or funded through an increase in taxes. So you just go back to that diagram showing the government spending is a key part of the analysis because it then promotes better evaluation. How is the subsidy to be funded, for example? The impact of a subsidy, just one more little development. The effect of a subsidy depends in part on the coefficient of price elasticity of demand as well as the generosity, how much of the subsidy is being offered to supply. So I'm going to show you another diagram where demand is drawn as more price elastic and it'll be the same subsidy per unit. This time it leads to a larger expansion of demand. And of course, if demand goes up, um, uptake of electric vehicles goes up, the subsidy payment by the government will also increase. So that was my original diagram. Can you see that the green area shows the subsidy payment? This time I'm going to draw the demand curve as more price elastic. 
So for the same, I'll go back a slide here for you. For the same subsidy, we get a bigger increase in demand. Can you see that? Q2 is bigger than it was before. Producer still gets the subsidy. Consumer pays P2. And that green area, you should see, is bigger than it was before. Before that, afterwards. Uh, because, in part, because the output's gone up. So the government is committed to the subsidy per unit, and therefore they'll have to pay a little bit more in total. There we go. Uh, that was the subsidy diagram. Hopefully that was useful. In the next video, uh, same topic, produce the subsidies, this time using cost and revenue curve analysis. Take care, stay safe, stay happy. See you soon.